Howdy, all of you delicious people. I'm here today to review Here Comes the Boom. Ready or not, Here Comes Boy from the South. Uh, here Comes the Boom, another mixed martial artist kind of film. To me, of course, this is a interesting movie, but also it's one of those that I feel technically, in all honesty, has kind of been done. But... The thing that I like about this movie is we, one, have Joe Rogan go on, and I think this was on a, uh, like an interview somewhere going on and saying how legit Kevin James actually was during this whole movie, and how, like, hard he trained and all the, like, stuff that he uh was to go on to do this movie so like we had joe rogan go on and authenticate this film for us and the one thing that i also like the guy who is to uh of course be uh the one fighter who is to be called lucky the guy that was to be coming out and here comes the boom uh entrance song where he kind of stole uh, Scott Voss's Here Comes the Boom song, the guy that's, uh, uh, to have the green hair. Uh, I think his name is, uh, Murphy, or, no, Miller. Um, because I want to try to get this right. Uh, Jason Mayhem Miller is his real name. He plays Lucky Patrick Murphy in this movie. Uh, Jason Mayhem Miller, like, I know I've seen him on the show, like, Bully Beatdown. Like, if you've never seen Bully Beatdown, go ahead and check it out. That show is really interesting. Uh, it has a really interesting concept. And it's, like, I have seen so many of those kinds of episodes where I'm like, oh my god. Like, this is so horrible. You have, like, a guy that is to be, uh very confident about things and then he goes into this cage and then he goes up against his fighter and i just feel so awful uh for these guys who are to go on and uh be uh i don't know how authentic this show this show really is um but i know the punches are real <laughs> i know the kicks are real uh, and it looks like it freaking hurts, uh, but, um, but yeah, but do you, like, so there might have been a number of things that might have come out as been some kind of acting performance or whatever, because, like, look at any kind of reality, uh, like Jerry Springer and all that kind of stuff, like, we go on, we end up having these people that we come off finding out that they're legitimately just actors who are desperately trying to like make their break and whatever and so yeah uh and that's not a flack on of course patrick murphy it's just the flack on any kind of show that eventually that just trickles down to have just somebody like hey i heard the show is going on uh let's just come up with this story so because i don't really know how authentic everything is at some point. So. But check out Bully, D Bully Beatdown. That's a really cool. I liked that show. Um, and like yeah. Like. Uh, that was the interesting thing about this. This was the uh, interesting approach of this, sh of, of this movie. Was like okay. We're going to of course have some authentic people. Uh, but. The also thing that I find kind of like unauthentic about this movie is it kind of feels like it's technically has been done uh look at the tom hardy movie like warrior where you have of course uh that movie where it's like you have a teacher who's forcefully moonlighting as a uh as an mma fighter to desperately try and keep his house same kind of story <laughs> same familiar kind of story um but uh we have the guy who i think his real name was uh joel actually did have some mixed martial arts uh background and we had guys like kurt angle go in there and 
who, of course, is a collegiate uh, Olympic gold medalist uh, for wrestling and kind of going in there and doing MMA, which I was like, wow, this is this is really cool. Uh, I liked Warrior. Um, and now I can finally see what the correct title is because I always have to double uh, double question it. Um, but yeah, like, this movie also kind of breaks down as, like, a Joe Somebody kind of movie. Uh, the Till Tim Allen movie, Joe Somebody, where, of course, we have Tim Allen, who all of a sudden is to be uh, kind of confronted by this guy who's saying, like, well, hey, I'll, I'm going to fight you, because it's the, the guy who ended up doing the voice from uh, uh, Family Guy, the guy who uh, is to, of course, be the wheelchair guy. I don't remember what his name is. Uh, and so... Uh, we go on and we have this guy who's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna fight it out. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, give him X amount of days for him to train and, and beat you legitimately. And then, like, that movie is to be played out and whatever. Uh, the only thing I really liked about it is supposedly the setting was Minnesota. So I thought that that was cool. Um, but yeah, so, uh... So I like these kind of underdog-like stories. I like it where uh, you have these kind of guys who are to go on and, like, heavily train. And, uh, and I like those kind of films. Like, I like those kind of approaches where uh, you, of course, have Kevin James's character who is to go on and fight to keep uh funding into his school which is kind of a very interesting story and it's kind of a come around to what exactly is the tee up version of this movie it's a mixed martial artist movie like i don't want to say it's completely ufc because there's also kind of the uh the minor league so to speak the uh certain rungs that you have to get to to get to ufc some exhibitions some stuff where it might not actually pay all that well to go and fight people because uh, we had guys like Dave Batista that has gone and mentioned that he had gone on and fought a mixed art martial artist fight and he had won that match but he turned out turned around and realized it, like well like if I really would have gone on and done all this like I probably would have like uh spent a lot of time having to go and fight all of these fights and i probably would not have gotten any money for it and who knows if dave would have gotten into ufc but hey he freaking did it like good for him uh and so we really have it to where luckily for uh scott's character here things just work out <laughs> Things work out to where Scott Voss is technically getting paid for things and that Scott is to go on and eventually towards the end of this movie make his way into the UFC and uh, eventually see how this all plays out. Um, we have uh, kind of really interesting uh, kind of people put in the mix here like Joe Rogan of course is to admittedly say that uh like he doesn't want to go and and do much of movies anymore but like i like the fact that we have like uh joe i think was trying to do this for the right reasons because he was thinking it's like well uh i think he had some uh like kid of his that was to of course love music and so like that was giving him like this was becoming like a passion project for him and so we have people in the mix like Selma Hayek, who's been in a lot of kind of Adam Sandler, Kevin James movies. Uh, we have Henry Winkler, who, of course, plays the uh, the uh, band teacher who is to go on and desperately need uh, this school to come up with funding to keep his job. Because that's the main story here, is that this school is to be losing a massive amount of funding. And we eventually, towards this movie, end up finding out why. So, uh, so with that said, um, uh, oh my god, really? Uh, I think the one bad guy of this whole film doesn't even have a picture in IMDb, I don't think. Man, does that suck. Oh my god, really? Uh... <laughs> 
Wow. Okay. Well, we'll have to just go on and figure out how to uh, figure that all out. Of course, we had the one freaking guy. Anyways, I guess that happens. So let's go on and let's... Uh, so uh, Scott Voss is to be this kind of uh, teacher who... Like, teaching to him doesn't really, like, he's not very passionate about it anymore. Basically, once he's to go on and come into class, he doesn't even come in on time. And he, of course, is to also just really not be a person that is to be, like, focused on studies. If anything, he's much more focused on his newspaper or just kind of biding the time to just kind of get out of here. Uh, and then all of a sudden, we end up having to come up with a couple of reasons that Kevin is, or Kevin James's character, Scott here, is to turn around and just say, like, well, like, now I do care. Now, like, I'm going to put my own body on the line to show much, show how much I care about this school. And... So all of a sudden that starts to have everything start to really, while he's doing this, it seems that we go on here and we start to see things falling into place. Like Bella Flores, who of course is Selma Hayek, is much more interested in Scott's character now that he's going on and fighting for his life. And it seems like they are to be spending a lot more time together and so on and so forth. Uh, really, yeah, like... Um, I like the way that this movie goes on to do, uh, to do a thing, but it also is to have it be that, like, Scott always is to get really hurt, like, uh, and I feel just so horrible, uh, for a guy who has to get consistently beat up through all this film, and, uh, but it, it's, it has a really good, uh, eventual payout towards the end of this film and a feel good moment, so, uh, yeah. So with that said, let's go into here comes the boom. Let's go into that double five because it's otherwise that time yet again to go into this thing called spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time again to spoil this movie, Boys from the South. Anyways, so let's go on to it. Here comes the boom. Uh, really, if you want to go out of your way to say that you've seen this, uh, I went on to Amazon and I think it might be primed right now. Uh, it might be a primed one. Uh, if there are any reasons why you can't go into Amazon or maybe you don't have a Prime account or whatever freaking reason, uh, I'm sure you can also go on to uh, a number of other reviews that I've gone through the beginning of my time here. And there's a number of apps that, can, that I've dare in fact uh, mentioned to you uh, that are absolutely free that you can see any number of things. Go on to that. Check that out. So without a doubt... Let's go into this movie. So like I said, we have Scott Voss, who is late for his own uh, class that he's teaching. We have a tour. He's scrambling with his motorcycle, desperately trying to get to school. And he is to sneak in through the window to immediately have Principal Bencher uh, spotting Scott here. And so Scott is coming up with some kind of uh, thing to teach the class of like, Oh, well, that's how, like, <laughs> that's how a uh, a larva is to leave its embryo or some goofy thing like that. That he ends up making up uh, to say that he's teaching the kids a lesson. The principal's like, uh-huh, sure. So the principal is to take, of course, Scott and tell him, it's like, well, hey, like, if you're late any time again, like, I'm going to go on and... Uh, dock one of your vacation days and so after that Scott is just to decide it's like well since my uh since one of my vacation days is docked anyways I might as well just not do any work here and so we go on and we of course have Scott who is to eventually uh go and listen in on of course Marty Stebbs or Streb's uh, music class. And we have this music class that, of course, is to seemingly struggle because it takes, like, 
a while to get really good at one song, especially if this is their first cut at it, because I know there's a lot of times where, like, if people have been taken banned, like, it doesn't kind of make sense that we have both the, uh, like, the clarinets and the trumpets and the whatever kind of mixed in with the uh, the violins and the, the cellos and the whatever. Um, I think that's kind of weird here, but maybe we have just this one class where all of a sudden they're like, well, these are all the kids that just are to teach bands. So we just kind of have to all mix them together. Uh, maybe that's what's really going on because I know if you would have, you would have certain kind of separate classes because of course I was in band at one point. So you would have like a woodwinds kind of thing off to the side for their class. And you would have band, like actual like trumpets and trombones and whatever. You would have them in a separate class. But I guess they just combine them here for whatever this class is. Hence why probably funding is just so low for this school. Uh, no offense. So <laughs> no offense to anybody that has had like a different kind of band experience than I have. Because maybe your school just uh, decided to just combine them all together. Maybe this is just like your class. I don't know. I don't know your life. So, <laughs> I don't know how you live your life. Mm -hmm. Anyways, pushing on. So, Scott is starting to see these kids go on and try to play this. And it seems like they're going well enough. We have Marty here who's kind of conducting them and going on and being their metronome to kind of like tell them like, uh, when things are to start to come in, like the second violins, and hence why they're called the second violins, you go here. Da 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 da. da. Okay, so so uh, eventually, after this song is to be finished up here, we eventually have Marty, who is disposed to give up the quote of the day, where he is to go on and say, uh, of course, this quote. Uh, about how like music affects people and so on and so forth. Heaven believe that I would actually know what this quote is because it's quoted more than once in this film, but things are forgotten as well as dialogue. So please forgive me. Uh, you can go through the movie and hear the quote numerous times. <laughs> but, so we go into this movie um, and of course have us uh, have Scott all of a sudden meet up with Marty and Marty all of a sudden is to hear is to be in shock because all of a sudden he is to have his wife call him and his wife is to tell him that they're pregnant and so Marty is asking Scott it's like well you teach like biology right and Scott's like well yeah and it's like Marty's like, do you think it's possible for uh, a woman of a certain age to be pregnant? It's like, Scott's like, well, yeah, like any woman can technically still be pregnant and whatever. It's like, well, how old are you? <laughs> it's like, it's like I'm old. <laughs> it's like, well, like you guys have another kid on the way. Good for you. Bravo. So all of a sudden, because uh, we have Scott who's desperately trying to sponge off uh, his, uh, his, uh, God, what is it? Like his traffic beat where he's to kind of uh, guide the kids to go on and, uh, into certain locations and so on and so forth. So we go on and we have Scott who is to, with all the other, these, with all these other teachers, find out because the principals do this kind of meeting that their funding, uh, for the school is getting butchered. And so we consistently have Scott bringing up the whole, like, uh, as well as his principal is still bringing up the whole vacation day. And so we have them mention that music is getting cut. I'm like, well, usually if, uh, if there's anything getting cut from school, it's usually the art and music program. Like that's the easiest thing to do. We have Marty going on and saying that the football team gets, like, 
New Jersey's every year. Why is it that they spend so much money on the football team? It's like, well, that's because you have a lot of like hands in that where they're donating. And so really like they're never going to touch the football team that of course never like uh, just kind of pops in there that never comes into mind. Um, it kind of feels horrible for like some places uh, when they had like uh, the cove going on, how, like, how could they have survived for as long as they could because, and didn't have to even cut funding even worse because there were so many activities where money wasn't going in for the school to do them, uh, and so on and so forth. So, schools, however you guys did it, bravo. So, we go on here and we of course have it where uh scott is to go on and mention it's like well hey like like you can't you can't fire this guy like you just want to fire him because he's uh gonna get tenure soon and and you also can't fire him because he has a baby on the way and everybody's like what and marty's like yeah i have a baby on the way <laughs> so the principal is just like, well, like, this is like $48,000. How do we expect to get this kind of money? And Scott's like, well, uh, like, we'll raise it. We'll fundraise it. We'll do something. We'll figure out. And like, and Marty's just looking at him. He's like, thank you. <laughs> so Scott is to go on and they're just like both Marty uh, and Scott are trying to, like, figure out what the heck they're supposed to do here. And so we have it where Scott and Marty are to supposedly get all the teachers together to figure this out, how they're going to fundraise and figure out how to get uh, money for this school to save these people's jobs and, and whatever. So... We go on and nobody's really show up to this thing. And uh, Bella Flores' character, who is Selma Hayek's character, shows up. And uh, she's like, yeah, I guess nobody showed up to this. And Scott's like, well, I guess we tried. And she's like, well, what do, like, they didn't really even do anything. <laughs> so Scott is to quickly just turn around and think like, you know what? I think I'm just, I think we're done. Like, I think there's no way to just save this. So all of a sudden we all, we have it to where Scott is to uh, remember that I guess he can go on to teach, uh, teach immigrants how to go on and get, uh, of course, uh, what is the perfect word here? Citizenship? Because uh, it's not a green card. Green card's different. Um, but citizenship, that's what I was going with there. So Scott goes on and is to start teaching these immigrants how to become U.S. citizens, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of like when we had like Harold Ramis in Stripes who's going and trying to teach uh certain immigrants english like it kind of feels like that familiar kind of territory so we of course go on here and in the classroom uh we of course have one uh guy who is to go on and uh actually teach uh teach uh scott how to mix martial art Tist, uh, here because we have a guy named Nico. Uh, Nico's kind of funny in this movie because we have him doing this like twisted and uh, and uh, and get you in a tight spot and all this kind of thing. Which kind of wondering if like Nico, like I wonder if he took any of that from like any part of his life or like were they just kind of like injecting that into this character is kind of like where I'm kind of uh, wondering, like, how, where they got any of this stuff from. So, so we go on and we have it to where Scott Voss is trying to teach these, uh, trying to teach these uh, immigrants how to become U.S. citizens. And we have a lot of people just kind of struggle with the common stuff. And 
we have him talking about uh, suffrage. And one uh, guy who I think is Miguel, uh, as I question that, uh, to the audience. <laughs> Miguel, oh my god, I got that right by utter surprise. <laughs> Child surprise. All right, that, that's The Witcher. Anyways, so Scott Voss is to go on and Miguel is to go on and say suffering. And it's like, no, that's not the same thing. Uh, we have Nico who ends up saying the right to vote and he's like, correct. And so it seems like people are starting to figure things out. So we eventually have Scott who, uh, is to kind of finish with this class because he spent way too much time kind of getting nowhere. And so Nico is to go on and say like, well, Hey, like, uh, when I try to study, I end up getting into a tight spot. Like, do you think that you can help me and tutor me? And Scott's like, you know, I'm so busy already. And Nico's like, oh, okay, well, like, I guess that uh, that means that, like, uh, that's going to be it for that. So Scott is like, well, wait a minute. Let, let's go and let's figure something out. Well, I'll help you. So Scott and Nico are to go on and uh, meet at his place. And we have him and a bunch of other guys watching UFC. And... So, like, Scott is to seemingly pick up quite easily what's going on with this UFC thing. I don't know if he's ever watched it before. Um, but, yeah, it seems like he's, like, uh, picking it up easily because he was an amateur wrestler, which I'm like, oh, okay. So, like, uh, like, UFC and amateur wrestling, like, it doesn't start out the same, like, when you see kind of collegiate and stuff like that. But... Like, it's kind of the same premise. It's kind of like it starts out as, like, this boxing match, but then eventually we uh, go into submissions or we go into, like, I shouldn't have to explain UFC to a lot of people. It's kind of, like, it's a much more bigger thing than it used to be uh, with, like, the no-holds-barred and the uh, and the bare-knuckle uh, fighting that it used to be, but it ended up becoming a legitimate uh, sport. And, and so on and so forth. So, uh, but then again, when you ask uh, very uh, specific companies, they're like, oh, somebody's going to die in that ring. Uh, <laughs> and you might be there. Uh, like, if you've probably heard a, a certain uh, person's interview when they left that, comp that company that was to say that kind of, that UFC is a barbaric sport and whatever, Oh God, I don't even want to get into that um, because I'm I'm kind of like parroting what that guy was to say, but it is what it is with that with that kind of thing there. So, uh, so we go on and we of course have Nico who is kind of uh, breaking down certain things, breaking down certain moves, and also just breaking down how like the pay scale is. Um, this guy just wanted to get his quick 10 grand and the he's like wait a minute what like you can get paid for like doing these like these fights and they're like well yeah so scott is all of a sudden just like well like well then we're gonna just have to just fight for uh for the money so that we we can go on and uh fund this school because we have, uh, we have Scott eventually going to Eric Voss, and funny enough, we had Gary Valentine, who is actually in uh, God the other James Smith show, like uh, King of Queens, and for some reason, I thought that this guy was actually legitimately like, uh, James's brother here, because I was like, man, they look so similar, and it's kind of interesting to kind of see them, like, consistently doing, like, this, uh, brother role, uh, when they do actually look fairly similar, and so, uh, we end up having Scott, who's going to Eric, just saying, like, hey, man, like, do we have any, do you have any kind of, uh, painting jobs that I can do, and Eric's, Eric's like, no, man, I'm swamped, uh, like there is, uh, 
or there isn't anything to kind of toss your way. So we go on and and we also have Eric who's kind of dealing with his whole family and he's exhausted. And so or, or no, wait, why, why am I saying he's swamped? He's cutting back a lot, I guess. So we, but we eventually have Eric who is to find what his real passion was, which is really cooking. And we kind of get an interesting story out of that, which I kind of enjoy. Because uh, eventually this guy is to find his passion and he finds out that his passion is cooking. And so all of a sudden... There is to be this story written where the, the girl who is to go on and play the piano in the music class is to all of a sudden change to possibly not taking band anymore, which doesn't exactly make sense to me. Uh, but we have her giving up band because maybe she's taking private lessons off to the side. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and she maybe does that every day. Don't know. Um, but this girl is to go on and give band up so that way she can work uh, at her father's restaurant. So, uh, at Mr. De La Cruz's restaurant, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that some ballparkingly where close, because uh, eventually this guy comes up again and we'll actually see him in this movie. So... So we go on and we, so we have Scott who is go on and give up his uh, immigration class because he's going to go on with Nico and say like, hey, you know what, that school that or that uh, that fighting thing that you want me to do or, or that you were talking to me about, you know, uh, how about you and me? Let's go on and like, let's do this for real. Nico's like, are you kidding me? Like, no. <laughs> uh, but we have a tour. Scott is convincing Nico to do this. And he's like, all right, well, like, you're going to just kind of go in here and wing it uh, in this first matchup. And so, like, Scott is to tell Marty that he's doing this. And Marty's like, are you insane? And Scott's like, there's no way that we can get the funding uh, for this school to do what we need to do. So we're going to have to USC this. So we go on and we have Scott as, as I'm saying, uh, USC as an adjective or whatever. So, uh, we have to USC this, see this out, uh, which is not actually USC. It's kind of the minor, uh, leagues of things. It's kind of funny because a lot of times when a lot of guys, go into wrestling schools, they immediately, like, I guess some of them are to think at some point that they would eventually just get shot up to uh, going into the pros with, like, WWE and whatever. There always has to be, like, there's a lot of times where you have to kind of work your way up to that. Like, for uh, baseball, like uh, like the Minnesota Twins or the, uh, or the Mets or the uh, Rangers or who, Orioles, they all have like a minor league team that you kind of have to work your way up to to get to that major league. And there's like triple A, double A and whatever A, uh, whatever A that you end up being in to eventually you get to the pros. So there's always like there's always a workup. Um, yeah, it may not pay the greatest, but like really it may just be rewarding for you to just be living your dream at some point, And that might just be enough for you. Uh, to just live your dream. So, and that's the real story about this, is someone just kind of living their dream in, in one way or another. So, we go on here and we have Scott, who is to go and do this match kind of cold. He's not, like, he's not told anything. He's not taught anything. He's just going in there. And Scott's like, well, we're going to lose. <laughs> Like, that's the plan. We're just going to lose and get our payout and just walk out of there. So, Scott weirdly has all of this, like, headgear on and shoulder pads and whatever. Because Marty is saying that uh, what they're going to try to do is just intimidate their opponent. Intimidation! 
So Scott goes out there, of course, the the uh, the here comes the boom song. And so we have Scott who's just like, yeah, I'm like, I'm being this Viking. And I'm yeah. <laughs> and so uh, we go out there and Scott is to, uh, of course, go on and and like get set up for this guy. And so the bell rings and this guy comes freaking at Scott and just mainly knocks him out where like he's now on a stretcher being uh boomed out of there so to speak and so now like i don't know how much money they wasted on the shoulder pads and the helmet and the whatever but man was that a waste uh so we go on and we have it where scott is to desperately want to get trained by nico because nico had supposedly gone on uh, to make it into the pros, to make it in the UFC. And for some reason, he ended up ruining his neck, which we end up seeing in the later film that Nico ends up getting really upset because both him and Scott are the same age and Nico can kick uh, Scott's butt. But the problem is, is that Nico is to ruin his neck. And... Uh, really for a lot of sports with the exclusion of technically much more recently, uh, cause there's a lot of guys that have bad necks, like, uh, find out the story about WWE wrestlers like edge or, uh, certain other wrestlers that have had neck problems that basically sideline them to retire early, uh, to then all of a sudden just turn around and eventually go on to, uh, go back into wrestling they had neck problems and so a lot of a lot of characters were sidelined uh wwe's page at one point i think was sidelined because of a uh, a supposed neck injury uh there was also guys sidelines because of concussion stuff but eventually that eventually got healed and cured and whatever and they got tested and they're okay so we go on here and we of course have uh, Scott, who is, of course, to go on and get training by Nico, who I guess is to also be doing this spin class and do this disco street fighting thing, which I thought was funny. <laughs> Victory dance! <laughs> Victory dance! <laughs> and stop your villain and stop... <laughs> like, what is this? This is fun. So... Uh, Nico goes on and he is to train Scott. And so Scott at some point is to be taught like kind of the rear naked uh, choke here. And so we have it to where the more and more that Scott is to struggle, the more the choke can get synced in. And so, of course, Scott taps. Uh, so... We go on and we have Scott who is to be failing at every single one of these submissions. And of course he ends up tapping because he ends up just getting more and more pain. And so all of a sudden now Scott is just saying like, well, hey, like I bet you wouldn't be able to get out of any of these submissions if I put them on you. And so we end up seeing the reverse where all of a sudden Nico is just kind of quickly just, I'm free. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> We're just going to have to wing it when we get again uh, to another match. So we go on and we have Scott who's consistently fighting all these like really uh, exhibition kind of fights and whatever that shouldn't be getting him paid. But I guess they are getting him paid. So we have at one point an interesting thing where all of a sudden like uh, the ring is to be broken at one point, And so they're fighting with a broken ring. And so Scott ends up like falling through the ring at one point. And I thought it was like, oh my God. So we also have it to where at one point uh, Scott was fighting during like a day where it was like pouring down rain and it was like lightning. And they're like, hey man, like this is baseball. Like you're still going to have to fight anyways. So 
they're going and they're slipping and fighting and slopping and and and, and flipping everywhere. And so Nico is telling Scott, "Is like use the point since you're slippery now to just use that to your advantage." And so they're slipping and flopping. I'm like, "Oh my god!" So we go on, and so Scott continues to fight all these matches, uh, and is to most of the time just lose them. Uh, but then eventually we finally get to have Scott who is to go on and get this more like seemingly more legitimate match with, of course, Lucky here, the guy that I mentioned before. And so hilariously enough, we have Lucky come out and here comes the boom song. And they're like, oh my God, he took, he took his song. So we go on and we now have this scrambling where Scott is to have to come up with a new song. And he just has Marty go on and tell him to just like, hey, come up with a song. Before they are to make it to this match, we of course have Scott who desperately like needs some kind of meal and he's asking for his oatmeal that isn't there. Uh, we also have it to where at some point Marty was to actually bring the stool this time around because they weren't gonna they didn't have stools at some point before. And at some point we had Marty who was to actually be Scott's stool for certain parts of his round because they just didn't have a stool for Scott to sit on. It was like, why don't they just have a chair? <laughs> why is there such a problem with just giving him a chair to sit on? I don't know. I guess it was just a joke of that. So eventually we have it where like at one point Scott was just to fall on like the mat and he was like, I'm so tired. I'm so exhausted. And then he gets back up. So we go on and we have Lucky and Scott fighting here after uh, Scott in his car is to eat uh, this uh, uh, this uh, applesauce that had been sitting out in his car for a while, kind of heating up. So Scott goes on and is to fight Lucky here and the guy from Bully Beatdown. And so we go on and we have Scott all of a sudden get this really lucky punch out of nowhere. And Lucky ends up going down like, plow. And so like, okay, like uh, Scott won. And he's like, oh my God. <laughs> like I actually won a match. And so Scott, after the match is to be done, he all of a sudden accidentally like, Bars on his opponent. Like he was trying to say like, hey, good match guy. And all of a sudden he blah, all over him. And so Scott is to go to school the next day. And he's become a viral success about this teacher who is to go on and barf on his other opponent. So while we also had Scott kind of uh, giving Marty crap about the whole applesauce thing. And Marty's just like, hey, man, mistakes were made. There's nothing we can do about this now. So we go on and have Scott, who's in class. And we have Scott, who's like, hey, man, keep it down. And we, of course, have one of his students uh, that eventually is to become this successful student named Derek. Who's like, well, can you keep it down? <laughs> and I'm like, OK, what's the joke here? So all of a sudden, Scott is to ask one of his students, uh, who of course is to be, uh, uh, good grief, uh, whoops, oh, of course, <laughs> heaven forbid, right, um, You have got it. Like, she's in the bulk of the movie. The 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 piano girl. Uh, let's go with... Uh, Mr. De, uh, De La Cruz's daughter. Let's go with that. That's easy explanation. So, 
we go on here and oh, I guess her name is M Mila. Mila. All right. So we go on here and. We have Mila going and telling uh, Scott here that uh, Scott is now a viral success about him barfing and come to find out uh, everybody's very appreciative of this teacher now going and fighting for their school because no one else would. So everybody, all the, like, the kids that are in band are kind of very appreciative of Scott. So... He's like, well, yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy to do it, like, because that's all I can do. So, so eventually we have this come to a head uh, because Mila wants to go on and continue to do school and, or continue to do band and not do her restaurant gig. So all of a sudden, uh, Mr. De La Cruz comes in and is to confront this school with Scott and say that there's nothing that Mr. De La Cruz can do, uh, so he needs his daughter to work with his restaurant. And so Scott goes on and he's like, well, hey, man, I'm sorry. Like, our school, like, failed your daughter, and I'm sorry that you're, like, so busy doing, like, what you're doing at your restaurant. But... Eventually, we have it to where Scott is to come up with this uh, this plan to help uh, to help everybody out by getting his brother Eric Boss to just kind of come on and be the chef for this restaurant. So everything kind of works itself out. So we have some point where consistently Scott and Bella Flores is like. Scott is consistently having to see Bella to have her help uh, Scott out in some way. Going on and giving him ice packs, going on and giving him certain medical attention, uh, having to pop back in his shoulder because I guess his shoulder is out of socket and like all kinds of things. And so Bella is just like, oh my God, I can't believe that kind of worked. Because <laughs> we have it to where Scott like can't lift his arm a certain range. Uh, realizing that his shoulder is probably out of socket here. So, we go on and eventually have it to where eventually Bella is to go on and date Scott and is to go to his house uh, and have him make this certain kind of dish that I guess his brother is to know how to cook for him. And so... Bella is to say, it's like, well, you didn't cook this. Like, wherever restaurant you got this from, it's amazing. And Scott's like, well, I'm the chef. I cooked this, as he lies. So she, of course, to mention, it's like, where is this diff dish from? And he's like, well, it's a Turkish meal. And she's like, wrong. It's a French meal. And he's like, no, like, it's like that the name comes from France, but like the actual meal is Turkish. <laughs> like, so, like, we have that all kind of playing around kind of thing. And so, it seems that, like, both Scott and Bella are to just, like, it seems that there's a possible relationship possibly out of here, but I don't think it's going to be anything uh, besides them ever just being just friends. Uh, just because there's, like, a convenience kind of thing to, to them just kind of eventually... Uh, doing, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere, sadly enough. I could be wrong. Maybe we can have a Here Comes the Boom 2, where, uh, Kevin has to go on and do some something to win money for the school. So, we push on here, and so, uh, Scott has to go on and do these fights, and it seems like he's getting better and better and better because he eventually goes uh, to see this uh, one coach that is to teach him offense. And so, heaven forbid, you actually have uh, 
the actual name of any of these people, right? Uh, let's go with, uh, let me pause here. Mark De La Grande, of course, is to be uh, Kevin's uh, offense coach. And so we have Mark go on here and have uh, Scott's character go up against three guys at one time. And so we have like Superman punches coming in. Uh, we have a bunch of kind of just uh, much more just like kind of consistently just beating the crap out of him uh, kind of moments here. Like kind of reminds me of like Southpaw where we have a uh, Forrest Lee now uh, like Billy Hope having to like block and defend uh, as this guy is to beat the living crap out of him where he's like, God, this guy is just a gnat. Like it's just a miserable experience. So we go on and we have Scott just like, he's not really fighting these guys off, but he just, is to consistently just get beaten up here because he just doesn't have much of an offense. So after this whole, like, them testing him is to be done and over with, and this guy is like, hey, come on, give me more. Like, go ahead. Like, I'll take on anybody. So we now go on and have them go, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to have this guy uh, train with us. And so they end up having him, like, uh, go and eat some meat, uh, some spaghetti and meatballs, but he can't lift his arms because he's just so exhausted. So, as they like twisted, yeah. Like, so we go on here, and we now have it to where uh, Scott is to be even more well-rounded of a fighter. So we go on further and further on into this film, and. And so Scott is doing so well that UFC is starting to scout people. They're interested. So all of a sudden, Joe Rogan and his uh, guy that he's with is kind of looking and like, ooh, this is interesting. So we eventually have it to where Joe Rogan is to go on and offer Scott a uh, like a one, uh, one fight offer, I guess, to just kind of see like, hey, if he wins... Uh, we'll kind of have, we'll get a, we're going to give him this X amount of payout and so on and so forth. So we have it to where they're like, yeah, like if we get 10 grand, we're so close to, uh, getting, uh, the money that we need for the school. And even if we lose like the 10 grand will go on to like work perfectly. So, cause we have Scott consistently giving this money to this, uh, guy that is to, uh, of course, be the guy who's like, yeah, I was in marching band once. I was a French horn and this and that. And so this guy, of course, is to go on and uh, I think he's the, the assistant principal here, um, Elkins. So we go on and we have this assistant principal that is to all of a sudden go on and steal all the money from the school and also steal a lot of money for... Uh, for the uh, for the funding that Scott was giving this guy, because they supposedly needed uh, this money by the end of the school term, so we now have it when Scott is to make it to this UFC fight. They like <laughs> if he win, like he has to win this now. Like he can't lose this match because. If he wins this match, he wins more than enough money to fund this school. And if he loses it, it's like, well, they'll just have to figure something out. So we go on here and we now have it where Scott is kind of back against the wall. And so we have it to where Scott, I guess, had made weight. And so they're kind of playing around with all this food. And so Scott is like, hey, like we made it to the dance. Let's look like professionals. So we go on and we have Scott who is to go to this match and is looking at his opponent. Of course, his opponent is to be, uh, heaven forbid you know the guy's name, uh, Ken Dietrich. I knew it was Dietrich, but I didn't know what the first name was. So we, of course, have it to where... Scott goes out uh, in his same song, but it's orchestrated differently. 
because we now have the kids that are to go on and play this song. And I'm like, oh man, that's really cool that we go on and we have this these all these kids that are playing off this song for um, Scott here. And so he goes out and kind of a very like almost emotional moment um, to really set up the end of this movie. So like just saying that these kids are behind Scott and so on and so forth. So we go on and we have Scott go out there and all of a sudden we end up having Ken Dietrich go out with uh, the Godsmack song, I Stand Alone, uh, which I think was at some point the uh, Scorpion King's like song uh, for that Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie from what I remember. Uh because I remember watching the Scorpion King movie and realizing that song was in there somewhere. Um, but anyways, pushing on. So, uh, we have it to where Dietrich and, uh, and Scott are to go in this match. And so we have it where Scott is turning to the guys. So it's like, well, like how much do we get when, uh, when I win? And we have Mark going like, he's, thinking that he's gonna win here and get 50 g's and it's like yeah like because i need that money so like okay like all right like we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see here so scott goes out there and immediately we have ken flying with his superman punch and i'm like oh my god this is so brutal uh because we have ken who's just so dominant here going on and doing a takedown and, like, Scott is just like, oh my god. So, we have takedowns here. We have it where Ken is grounding and pounding and so on and so forth. Any kind of UFC words that I can just say here. Putting in the elbows. Uh, putting in forearms. Just trying to go on and uh, just take down uh, Scott here. So... We go on and we desperately have to have it to where uh, Scott is to have to get out of the position that he's in uh, for being down on the ground. Because eventually uh, uh, we're going to have Ken who's going to try to, or Dietrich who's trying to going to try to uh, like stop this quick here. Saying that uh, Scott doesn't belong in the UFC and so on and so forth. That's the whole agenda is supposed to be behind this match. Uh, is to welcome the new guy, I guess. So, we go on and we have Dietrich, who is to just try and rock Scott here and kind of take him down. So, we go on and we have uh, also Dietrich, who gives, uh, of course, uh, Scott's character no respect out of the gate, but then towards the end of this match, he ends up giving him respect. And it's like, oh, that's nice. So, we go on, we just have it to where these matches go further and further on, to where Scott doesn't even know where he is at some point in this match. And so, he goes on to the wrong corner, and he goes on to his corner, he's like, oh, hey, yeah, good match so far. And he's just like, bruh, like, I'm just so freaking gassed at this point. So And, like, after the first round, like, uh, like Scott's like, he knows everything, he's... Like, he's better at everything. And, like, I'm like, oh, my God, I feel so bad. Uh, I feel so bad. Because uh, you just do. Uh, you just kind of have a guy that's like, oh, my God. So we go on here, and we have Scott, who, of course, is to go on. And uh, we, of course, have it where... Uh, Now, uh, Scott is to just be driven and to be motivated by uh, Marty here just going and telling him, it's like, well, hey, like, whether we lose or whether we win this match, it's like, the kids are to see something here. And it's absolute resolve that, uh, and that's what they're kind of learning here. And so we have it to her even more so, like, uh, Scott is just fired up because he desperately needs to 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 win this match, uh, to win this round because I think he's like gone on and gotten like clocked throughout the other matches, 
and like if he leaves it to a scorecard like he's probably gonna lose this one so we go on here and somewhere in this match we seem to have Dietrich going on and putting almost Scott in this arm bar and so Nico is yelling out here that uh that, hey, like, uh, don't lose your grip. Like, if anything, like, I've taught you how to counter this. Like, you got to remember what it is here. So, we go on. We, of course, do have Scott that's going to counter this thing. And he's going to lift up Ken in this, like, wah kind of thing. Like, Ken is baffled by this, this strength. And so, uh... We have it to where, of course, uh, Scott here is going to basically do this kind of like power bomb kind of maneuver on Ken here and knock him out. And so we eventually have it to where, of course, uh, Ken's taken out. Scott wins this match. They win the money. And so Scott is to go on and fund this school and we have the principal who's telling Scott, it's like, well, yeah, like you definitely put the school back in the red for a pretty good chunk. Uh, so good for you. So, but hey, get like, don't you have a class coming up soon? And Scott's like, yeah, I do. Like, go ahead, go for it. <laughs> so uh, as Marty's going on and conducting his band that is to sound a lot better for whatever reason, uh, because they have taken the time now to just uh, do this. So, uh, stuff that I left out uh, for whatever reason. Um, we had a one point Nico who is to go on and be taught by Mila how to figure out uh, studying for his uh, citizenship. Because, uh, of course, uh, Scott was to try... But Mila was to go and put this in a different approach by having Nico, like, say what his favorite song is, and it's Faithfully by Journey. So she goes on and is to kind of figure out a way for him to memorize this by simply thinking about a song and doing the whole, like, for your term! <laughs> Unless he will be impeached, and then he's gone! <laughs> and so on and so forth. So... And eventually they, they go on and, like, Nico is to realize, like, oh, my God, like, uh, like I can learn how to be a citizen simply by, like, uh, thinking of music. So, because uh, evidently Mila was to do the same thing of how she uh, didn't know English, but she could figure out how to learn English simply through music. Uh, so... Really, I think the only thing that I have left to say here is Nico is to go on and become a U.S. citizen, as well as Miguel is to also, like, I become a U.S. citizen two times! <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Miguel, you did it. So, we go on, because we had, like, Scott, who was telling all these people, it's like, well, hey, welcome to American Advance. Because <laughs> he's like, well, like, you people will make it, but whatever. So... Like, that's how this uh, movie is to kind of finish up with Nico getting his citizenship. And I'm like, yay, good for him. Um, so, yeah, like, that's how they kind of wrap up this movie and finish it up. Uh, we also had the one point where we had the one uh, point where, like, uh, Selma Hayek's character was going on and, like, having that one, like, really loud fan who was like, yeah! <laughs> And so, like, Selma Hayek's character gets even with that kind of loud fan. And it's like, shut up! Like, you guy lost! Mmm! Like, kind of uh, bitter at him and all kinds of stuff. Uh, anything that else that I probably missed here? I'm sure there's a number of things that I probably missed. Uh, because this movie has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, I know the one guy, Stitch, was to be the guy kind of working on... Uh, Scott, where he's like, oh my god, like, uh, I've meet, I met so many unique people by doing this, uh, by, uh, by doing this thing here. Like, well, yeah, welcome to UFC, buddy. So, 
so yeah, we go on, and it's kind of funny looking at this movie now, especially with, like, the tap-out logos and stuff like that, because the tap-out logos are drastically different than what they are now. It kind of looks like they took the tap-out logos and they kind of much more streamlined them. I like the old tap-out logos. Like, I like the whole kind of the way and approach of whatever about them. Um, the way they are now, like... Uh, I think it's simply because, like, they changed that approach up just because, like, WWE is going on with tap out and certain other sports are to be tied with tap out. It's not just uh, UFC now. So, like, I guess that's why they rebranded, which makes a lot of sense. But it's just, like, I like the older design. Like, the older design is just, the classic design is just cool. I like that. Um... Hence why I would have a shirt with the old tap out logo at some point, uh, but I still have. So going into this movie, yeah, uh, I think that's all that I want to say about this. I hope that people enjoyed Here Comes the Boom. Uh, we had that one spot where, of course, Marty was to be playing his guitar. Like, boom, here comes the boom. <laughs> Ready or not, here comes the boys from the south. And we end up having this song like, uh, from P.O.D. like play through like this whole stretch of uh, of thing where it's to basically be the theme song of this character but like uh, how much music are they really going to have in this movie that's the whole thing so but yeah so with that said I think most of this movie is to be covered I feel good enough about it uh, really this was kind of a surprise because really uh, like, I wasn't really 100% interested in watching this, but it just so happened to be on the TV, so I was like, oh, okay, like, uh, like, I'll kind of, like, I'll have my focus be on this, and I wasn't, like, completely wanting to review this movie, but hey, who knows, uh, it just so happens to be a thing that I can luckily, uh, review and watch and whatever, so that's great, um, so yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you for watching this review. Thank you for doing whatever you guys do uh, to help out this channel in any way possible. So yeah, uh, I think that's it. Here comes the boom for whatever. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.